team um, Scary. You know, like they just have so many weapons. Um, they utilize them in such unique ways, and uh, they got a quarterback that can facilitate it all. You know, so it's a it's a great challenge from that standpoint. It is an explosive offense that um, they can sputter, 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 and all of a sudden, seventy five yard gain, sputter, sputter, eighty yard gain. Like they have that type of explosiveness to them. They've got the athletes, they've got the speed, they've got the playmakers. So. Uh, we absolutely have to be on our our, uh, our best version of ourselves come Sunday. How, how much of the, you know, made it like the pressure that you guys need, need to get more pressure on the quarterback and stuff, how, how much of maybe the lack of it had to do with the, the style of play those first two teams were playing maybe this week uh, it would be a little, look a little different? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. I think... Um, there's definitely room for improvement as far as our rush is concerned. Um, that's the, the players executing. It's also me putting them in better positions to be successful as far as rushing. But I think there's absolutely validity to the, to the fact the first two teams were run first teams. And in this day and age of, of football, it's just rare you see that, you know, especially to get them consecutively. So uh, um, we'll have, we should have more opportunities to absolutely go forward and rush and jump out our shoes and do our thing as far as rush is concerned. With the run defense in the fourth quarter, uh, it looked obviously different than it did the first three. What, what do you think went into that, and how do you guys think you can improve that? Well, a, a big part of it was the deficit became bigger, and um, you know, I, I got to do a better job of communicating. Like, do we want to attack the ball? Absolutely, it's what we do. Um, you know, as we all know, it's the most historic statistic as far as winning is concerned, taking the ball off them, and that was. I think in the players' minds at times, that was their their mindset as far as let's change the course of this game by getting turnovers. Well, in doing that, we we failed to tackle as well as we should, you know. So um, I definitely got to be more conscious of that as far as telling them guys, first man in, you got to wrap this guy up. Like, that can't change. Second man, third man in, absolutely go take shots at the ball. Um, but we didn't do a good enough job of that collectively, coaches and, and players. What happened on the uh, on the, touch, the Amari Cooper touchdown? Was that just like a miscommunication with Sauce and the, the safety? Yeah, the 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 motion occurred. The safety rolled over there. Um, um, Ahmad thought he had heard something or didn't hear something, and uh, there was a miscommunication. And it was something that um, he would tell you the same that it's not going to happen again. What do you, what do you see from uh, Jamar Chase, and, and what do you tell your corners to do with these two guys because they're you know pretty good? Yeah, you, the the they have 85 too, you know. So like it's it's that rare team that has two like true ones, with one of those ones being um, maybe the best, if not top three receivers in this league. Uh, you know, we we've got to have schematic answers. We have to create gray for Burrow. We can't make the picture clean all the time. Um, which obviously there's a there's a huge component of that too to create hitches and get some pass rush on them too. So. Um, I think it's me really doing, you know, trying to do a good job as far as clouding the picture for, for the quarterback and um, also clouding the picture for the receivers that they don't know if it's single high, if it's closed, whatever the case may be from down to down. So they're not as certain with their route running and um, hopefully, you know, slow them down a little bit in that way, you know. But at the same time, we gotta, we got to make them earn every yard and we got to keep them in front and uh, we got to eliminate the explosives as best we can. One of the storylines in Cincinnati is that their offense has been frustrated by cover two, you know, and teams have been playing that against them. Do you see that? And also, that's not really one of your staple coverages. So right. I, when you see that, how, can you adjust, you know, even though it's really maybe not your bread and butter, how do you approach that? Yeah, the, so there's versions of um, not necessarily true like Tampa 2 that we do have in our arsenal, we do have in our playbook, um, you know, but. So we'll get variations of, of that, but it's definitely been something that they've been um, maybe not had their best games against. Uh, at the same time, it, it's hard. You know, it goes to what you're, I think what you're implying is it's not like necessarily something that we own and know through and through, and it's not necessarily a huge part of our, our package. So it's, I, I'm always hesitant to, to just, you know, bring something out like that because there are snakes in the weeds that we don't know, you know, that we're not familiar with, our players aren't familiar with. So, um, but th we, we do have versions that are similar to, I think, that can give us the same sort of success. What about setting the edge? What was the problem with that last week? 
Yeah, the edge setting just it's, it's got to be better. You know, the edge setting's got to be better. The pursuit from the backside's got to be better. Um, and ultimately, I think the tackling has to be better. You know, and it, and it goes into what I said earlier as far as uh, making a conscious effort that the first man in commits to wrapping as opposed to taking shots at the ball. Um, and there was a disconnect there, and that's that ultimately falls on my shoulders. Robbie, you, you always take ownership of the problems, but don't players need to do a better job getting off blocks? Yeah, everybody does. Yeah, for sure. We gotta we gotta edge set better, and when we edge set better, it'll give our pursuit more time and, and more opportunity. And then, uh, but there was the edge setting. There was that was a that was a, a part of it. I really believe that the tackling was probably the biggest part of it, though. You know and. And that's got to be better. It does. With Gardner during the you know, offseason and training camp, you guys talked about how he learned from his mistakes and, and like had that approach. Now that when he's having these lessons in the regular season and it matters, just how has he handled adversity and, and what have you seen from him in that regard? He's handled it extremely well. You know, it's it's something you're always very conscious of, I think, with rookies, just to be uh, – Keep your eye on them, you know, because there's going to be these ebbs and flows, and there's going to be these these learning experiences that can be painful, and and uh, you just you just got to observe the man. And I think each man is so unique, and each rookie is so unique when it comes to that that they get they potentially could get shell shocked, and they could start losing confidence, and they could start wavering, and they could start abandoning technique and just kind of making things up. I've seen that a lot, and uh, that is not the case so far with him at all. Um, he acknowledges the mistake. He grows from it, and um, and I, I really believe that he's not going to be a an error repeater, which is the best thing you can ask of your rookies. What did it say about uh, Ashton that he was able to play his first snap right. to leave the season? I think it was the the, the somebody said it was like the the best PFF game grade <laughs> for a game in the history of PFF. Um, it just it speaks volumes to the man that he is. That is not easy. It's not easy to be a backup in this league because you're asked to operate at a high level without all the reps at practice. And here's a guy completely cold from a defensive perspective, which I know he was playing special teams. But to come in, to execute at the highest level and then make that key play, um, we're fortunate to have him. And I was so happy for him. Just He's a tireless worker and just a great teammate, great human being that uh, you just wish good things for. So for him to make that play was cool, really cool. Why were there so many easy throws for Brissett last week? It seemed to be windows were pretty open. Well, it was. It, it wasn't a big drop back game. It was screens and boots. That was the vast majority of it, you know. And um, unfortunately, when you're not defending the well, the run as well as you'd like, you know, the, the guys become more aggressive, too aggressive sometimes for the run. Um, and then the byproduct of that is the play action, the boots, the screens that come off of all that play action. Uh, you don't play as well, you know. So a big part of fixing the, the the open throws, especially in the play action world, is playing the run better. You play the run better, the play action isn't as valid. Now all of a sudden you're you're playing the pass better too, you know, so it's a trickle down effect. Um, and ultimately we gotta play the, the run better if we want to be better in those in those pass the play action situations. I know you and Robert said that you feel like call is getting closer. I mean is there something you see that you say, okay, yeah, he, he is getting there now. Yeah, I mean you, this game was a run game, as we all know. And when the passes did occur, as I alluded to, it, it was boots, screens, not stuff where you can pass rush necessarily, you know, at the same rate. Um, what was really cool to see, though, in that, that critical drive where we knocked them out of field goal range, um, which at the end of the day, you know, meant the, the difference between winning and losing that game. Carl was the guy that got that sack or half sack. And uh, so it's a glimpse, I think, of of what he's growing into as he gets healthier every day and, and more comfortable and stronger and faster and more explosive. And um, as we start to play teams that give us more opportunities to pass rush, I think you're going to see more and more of that from him. What have you seen from winning in the first two games and, and what's the next step for him? I, I just see a guy that's just dominant. You know, he is, uh, he is virtually, in my opinion, impossible to block in the run game one on one and in the in the past game one on one like he's a guy that he's got game record written all over him um, I, I really believe the only way you can handle him is if you double him commit two sometimes you're, they're committing two or three and uh, so I, he just has to stay on course you know um, what I thought was really cool last week was 
not only the obviously the dominant play, but the fact that he's a guy that you know he gets nicked a little bit. He comes out of the game, and um, a lot of times guys go into protective mode, and, and I get that too. You know, protect your brand, protect your your play, protect the film that you're putting out, and um, and he disregarded all that, you know, and said I got to go out there for my teammates. You know, I think speaks volumes to the man that he is. And fortunately, it wasn't a type of injury that would have kept him out and, and, and all that. But the fact that he was so willing to play through it, and uh, it just speaks volumes to the man that he is.